The Bisons and the UAM Weevils met for the 55th time this, last, this past Saturday night. First time the Bison defense ever shut out a UAM team. It came on Saturday night. And a very pleasant good evening and welcome to this edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. And Coach, uh, very good evening for the defense. Uh, not only the shutout, but also able to score uh, with a pick six from Corey Beatty. Yeah, I tell you what, it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard, hard, hard to... to to shut people out, and, and these days, the way the game is played, you know, they just they, they take the hammer out of the hand of the defense, and it's it's an offensive-minded world we live in. And so, to to get a shutout is a giant deal. Also, you know, when you you take the ball away and get points, you know, that is such a, a game-changing deal for sure. You talked last week on the show about folks coming out and, and tailgating and, and enjoying the game. They did that. But, Coach, it was a very special night, obviously, for other reasons because of the fact that it was a tough week last week uh, with the passing of, of Dr. Gaines and, and the honoring, uh, I know, with all the sports, uh, with the number three jersey because of the fact that Dr. Gaines obviously obviously the third president at Harding. Hey, I tell you what, it was, it was really uh, surreal to have a ball game when, when he was not around and you know, just the way that he has loved us um, for so long and so well, you know, he, even to the very end, I mean, one of the last times I ever talked to him, he, he, he wanted to know about our slots and about our O-line and, you know, he, he was asking about individuals, you know, and he was a, a really, really sick state and just, he loved the boys so well and, um, you know, I told the boys, I said, guys, it's, you know, I'm not asking you to win for Dr. Gaines, but I am asking you to to carry yourself, to compete in a way uh, that would make him proud of us, and I think they did. You saw the decals there a few moments ago at the end of that shot, and uh, I know that was on the helmets and everybody in the press box uh, wearing those uh, special tribute to Coach uh, or to uh, Dr. Gaines on on Saturday evening with that as well. Yeah, you know, it's something that we've thought about, and I just kept on thinking, you know, maybe we won't we won't need it. Maybe we won't need it in, in a little bit longer and a little bit longer. We just we wanted to have that, that giant of a man just for as long as we could with us. And um, so we, we certainly are, are so honored to be able to uh, represent him and, and, and hopefully do things in a way that when he's looking down in heaven, he can see us and, and be, be pleased. We are going to talk about Dr. Gaines later on in the program as well here on Harding Football with Paul Simmons. We're going to take a break right here and come back and get you ready for the first half highlights on game day. First uh, game of the season to see a home opener this past Saturday when the Bisons beat UAM 24 to nothing. We'll return in a moment. In four days. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. <laughs> she had so many children. She didn't know what to do. Have a good day at school. She gave them some broth without any bread. There you go. And kiss them all soundly. Night night. Good night. And put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. We, we can hear his voice in there. Yeah, Hi, everybody. Welcome back to this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. Coach was talking about wanting the fans to come out last week, and we alluded to that a few moments ago, and boy, did they ever. It was a very festive lawn and uh, for the Brotherhood Walk. Also, the 1959 teams uh, were here. The kids enjoying things. Uh, I know it's, it's great to come to the games and when I park and I already see people tailgating uh, three hours before kickoff, it's, uh, it's excited. I'll tell you what, it, it was. I mean, I, people came through big time. There was a fantastic crowd. It was hot. Uh, but the tents were set up early, and I knew it was going to be fantastic. You know, we had a we had a lot of really talented recruits, and they were just blown away. They said, "Coach, we didn't know this kind of game day environment existed in Division Two. It was it was unbelievable." And to you know, see these old guys yeah. and to spend time with with those '59 Bisons, and and, and yeah, I mean, it was awesome. You know, we we met at the Rock House and and, and had lunch, and I and I visited with them and. You know, there wasn't a dry in the house. Those guys, just the way they love each other is such an awesome deal. 
Um, so proud to be able to honor them that way. Coach Moat right there uh, coming through. I, I know that he had told me what a great day that he had had with the 1959 team and just getting to be around the Bison football uh, team. And uh, it, it really was a, a, a special day uh, for those guys. And I, I know for them to come back, and, and many, of the, many of them obviously uh, getting to see everything going on with uh, the new indoor facility and being around a lot. But I know it also means a lot to your, your players as well for them to be here. It does. You know, I talk all the time about to our guys about how many people are proud of them, are pulling for them, love them, and, and you know, our guys just don't have any idea, you know, the guys that went before us and the things they had to endure, you know, for us to have what we have now. So uh, we love those guys so much and, and, and really just hope we do things the right way to honor them. So it looks like it was a great time out there with the games going on. Coach Simmons and I were going to get on one of those uh, games before a game sometime and have a have us a burger maybe before. I'm, I'm uh, a, I came in uh, third place in the National Cornhole Championships when I was 16. Well, you're my teammate. Yeah, well, I just made that up. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, a great atmosphere. Great uh, atmosphere on Saturday before the game. And uh, the Bisons would not disappoint when the fans got in the stands and uh, on Saturday evenings. Coach mentioned it was warm, but later on that night, I think it was a pretty nice evening for college football and the home openers. We look at the first half highlights. We'll start with the first quarter highlights right here, and it would be uh, UAM that will get uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, get the football first, and uh, we get our first look at your defense, who was outstanding. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you know, for two weeks straight, we've come out and had, had three and outs right off the bat. Great hustle play by Jordan Allison right there. You know, Jordan's a dynamite senior for us, love him. And, you know, here you see Corey Betty with the ball. Obviously, he's going to have a career night. Uh, but he's had two weeks in a row. He's played really, really well. And Taylor Mitchell gets the offense going on a good run right here. Yeah, this first drive by the offense was, was the best drive of the night. And they executed really well. And, the, you know, when you get early momentum, and early score, that's a, that's a really, really big deal. You know, not surprising to see a great tough run by old Cole right there. Um, but yeah, we, we needed some early momentum. You know, UAM was dangerous, and I was really worried about them. And for us to come out early and, and get on the board right off the bat was a, a big deal for our, our entire team morale. I tell you, runs of 26 from Bissell, runs of 36 from Chansey, and then set up that five-yard touchdown run, and uh, Ennis knocking home the extra point, seven nothing Bisons. Yeah, you know, they that I think their plan kind of was to just take what we give them, uh, gave them, and you know, some RPO and. Uh, you know, they, they completed them, but we did a great job of keeping the ball in front of us, making, making them go the long way. And, and, you know, last week they had a lot of big plays, and we just didn't give the big play up. Here goes Corey. Obviously a great job by Corey undercutting that route, and, of course, he can fly. Uh, we're really excited for Corey. Corey, is, Corey is, a, is a wonderful young man, and it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. So he's going to have a great season for us. Yeah, I, I really believe that he's a, you know, both of our corners are, are really, really talented. We'll always remember his first interception, 75-yard return for a touchdown, his first interception as Bison. So now 14 nothing to get the football back. That's the frustrating things. We, you know, we, we did not execute you know, on offense the way we'd like to, and, but we're, we're, we're going to. We're going to get that, get that better and better, I promise you. you know, those guys want to do well so bad, and it's just the little things right now that are kind of getting in our way. Uh, you know, a legal motion here and just assignment stuff that's so crucial, but we'll get that fixed. Another good punt from Cameron Scott, 43 yards and uh, no return, and it pins UAM inside their own 12-yard line. Moving now to the second quarter, 14-0 Bisons. Yeah, got a little look at Robert Wilkie there at quarterback, making a good play and a uh, good run from Tristan right there. You know, their, their defense really gambled, I and mean, they were gambling and running through gaps. And when you do that, you know, you're going to make an occasional big play, but you're going to get gashed a lot as well. I thought our punt team has played well all year. Mm -hmm. You know, you notice we have not given up a return this year of, of note, and those guys have done a great job. Coach Triple coaches that unit and takes great pride in that, which is what, what we asked them to do. So now UAM with another possession. Well, I just love seeing those 11 hats at the football. You know, I just take a lot of pride in the way our guys run to the football and pursue and, and rip and claw and, you know, try to make plays. I, you know, obviously one of the most important stats of any game is how you do on third down. And defensively on third down, we, we had a dynamite night. 
Bisons have a good looking drive going right here late in the second quarter. There's Malik Matthews, and I thought he had a good week in week one and getting touches right there. He did, he's getting better and better. He really is. This is a huge no call by the officials there. The guy ripped his face mask off, took the whole helmet off. Uh, yeah, Preston Payton comes in. That was Robert Wilkie who lost his helmet. I mean, he had to come out of the football game because he lost his helmet. Very determined run by Tristan right there. Boy, he's having a fantastic season. I don't know what he's averaging you know, per carry, but it's a lot. He's, he's done really well. Really proud of him. He played, he played, he played really well. He was, he was one of the best parts of the night offensively. I tell you what else, you know, what really doesn't get talked about very much is our receivers. You know, our receivers, they, they block like crazy. And Bobby Green was actually the player of the game for us just because of the way he blocked. Giant sack by Shedrick Robinson. That guy's a really talented young man. And, and uh, you know, he's getting to play a lot this year and, and just making things happen. Corey Beatty again. And he good, almost scored on this great one. Great block by Dylan Hampton right there. Yeah, I thought he was going to get in there. That would have. That would have been a little too much, I think, for him. You know, two scores, that much yardage. You set up uh, the field goal try and didn't take any chances. Said, hey, let's go kick the field goal right here and go into the line. Well, yeah, I thought we had seven seconds. I just, you know, I did not want to, you know, waste chances to get point right, points right there. And proud of old Grant. You know, Grant, he's coming on. Our kicker is getting better and better. So. What about that last defensive stand there because UAM had forced a turnover very late in the first half. I thought that was a big spot there in the first half. They had a chance to get points. Right before the lock, going into the locker room, but oh, the man. sack by Robinson and then the interception yeah. by Corey Bates. You know the difference in 21 to nothing. I mean, you know, 21 to seven as opposed to 24 to nothing. I mean, it felt it felt huge. It really did. You know, they're you know those guys have enough speed, enough talent that they can they can get some energy and catch fire and get dangerous. And that's I mean, that was my fear all the way to the very end that they would just you know catch fire, have a few big plays, and but. Boy, our defense, they just they battled all night long. It was really impressive. So the Bisons with a 24 to nothing lead at the half over UAM. And we'll come back and look at the second half highlights right after this. I remember, Dad, you and Mom got this car with a hatchback. I said, you know, I'd be happy to give you the money to get a really great car. And he said, well, no, this works for me. I says, why? Because it's the right height to put the meals in. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, tell me when you first got an inkling about Meals on Wheels. There was kind of an abandoned house. That's where we got started with Meals on Wheels. We kind of filled a need for people as they got older. It's the human interaction that probably fed them much more than the food. Oh, yeah. When you can see somebody else benefiting by your life in some way, you can't help but feel good about it, I think. Well, the reason I'm involved, Dad, is because you are, and you're so inspiring. How you've impacted people is enormous. Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. America, let's, let's do, do lunch. lunch. <laughs> Back on this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons, we've looked at first half highlights and now ready to go into the second half. And I know, Coach, you had to feel good coming back out of the field with that 24-point lead. But uh, as you said, UAM dangerous. Uh, you were uh, not feeling secure. You just no, good. no, a long way from it. You know, this, you know, these days guys can score quick, and it's, it's scary. So, you know, definitely there was not a level of comfort. Here goes Taylor. Great, great run by yeah. Taylor right here, really powerful, strong. You see Bobby down, downfield blocking, like I was saying. Bobby blocked his, his brains out, did an awesome job. And this will for eight yards right here. Yeah, it was eight, it was eight yards, but we needed nine. You know, yeah. that, was, that was fourth and eight. was a little bit, little bit too far for field goal range and just took a shot at it. There you see old Ja'Cory Nichols. That's a mm -hmm. playmaking dude. Now, if, you know, when you're, when you're safety making tackles for loss, that's really impressive. Jordan Allison, I thought, was very active. And Beontay Williams, they combined to make yeah. the tackle on that last great, one. Great, great pursuit. Well, Corey almost had, had the third pick yeah. right there. I, I probably quit throwing at him. You were talking about the special teams as well. Also blocked a punt there in the first half. Yep, Cade Pugh. You know, Cade played really well. Cade played really well on defense. I think there's a play on here in a minute where he kind of dominates the, the the guy blocking him, makes a makes a tackle for loss. But he's the one that blocked that punt, which was a was a you know was a big big play for us. Cole Chancy, then Tristan Tucker, and right back to Cole Chancy once again right here. 
Coach Hansey and Tristan Tucker each over 90 yards rushing in the game on Saturday night. You know, the, the, the key part of the game on offense is that, you know, we weren't very good on third down. But, you know, we, our average yards to go on third down was eight yards. I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not who we are. You know, third and eight is not, that's not our wheelhouse. And, you know, that, that had to do with execution and details. We'll get that fixed. Big We're sack by old Mike yeah. Gant right there. I could do that at the celebration. But uh, <laughs> it's certainly good to see that guy getting a sack. Sacks are hard to come by. Michael Gant is very fun. There's old Cade. See old Cade knock, yeah. knock that slot down and make a tackle for loss. He's going to be a really good player for us. It's exciting to see him get going. Cade Pugh from Helena. Uh, yeah, almost having a, a, a pick there by D.J. Beckham. You know, he's, a, he's a transfer. He's a new young man with us. He's doing a great job. Really proud of him. We move now. Yeah, the big, big third and short, and we got some guys playing that, that you know, hadn't got to play a whole lot. Oh, that's Taylor Mason, a fifth-year senior in there, really proud of him, and B.J. Burke in there blowing that up. Right here you're getting to see, oh, no more. You know, no more is a, a really talented young man that's gonna, got a really bright future for us, redshirt freshman, but he's a, he's a dynamite young running back that's going to do a lot of good things for us. Yeah, no more. Rivera Conde had several good carries on this drive. I thought we were going to stick it in here. You know, we got we got Dakota in there at quarterback, and you know they just kept playing hard, kept blitzing, and he he handled it really well. Really proud of him. Headed down in in the red zone right there, and able to run the clock out. And always great to see the Bisons winning at First Security Stadium. I always say one of my favorite things to see during football season is to look down on the field when I see the students and uh, the parents and everyone just come out and and uh, congratulate your team after, uh, obviously, you get together and have the prayer afterwards. Well, I, I say that a lot. You know, if, you, if you're if you a recruit and you're thinking about joining this brotherhood, the, the best time to come and see is just stand on the field after a game and just watch the people interact, watch the families, watch the way people love on one another, watch how members of the faculty come down and love on uh, boys that they have in their class. And, and it's just, it really is kind of who we are. It's, it's, it's about family. It's about brotherhood. And, and that family is really on display when the ball game's over. It really win or lose. You know, it's, it's pretty impressive. Bison's uh, new rankings have come out now 23rd nationally before uh, heading down to Southern Arkansas. We're going to talk about Southern Arkansas in a little bit, but uh, first we're going to take a break right here and have a chance to come back and catch up with a couple of Bison's. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about Corey Beatty. We'll hear from he and Tristan Tucker as Harding Football with Paul Simmons continues in a moment. Where's Tommy? I thought he was with you. No. Jack. Tommy? Go get him. from the Foundation for a Better Life. Back on Harding Football with Paul Simmons. We always like to catch up with the Bison players after the game and in the media room. Afterwards, we had a chance to hear from Tristan Tucker and Corey Beatty. They're in the trenches every play. Like, they're battling. They're doing their job. They're, it's really, like, a selfless job. Like, they, they really are awesome. Like, I appreciate those guys. Dirty Mike, uh, Bobby Green, uh, T. Biss on the outside, they, they do their part, and uh, I really appreciate them. And on the first one, I kind of just read like the outside, I mean the inside receiver, he tried to come pick me. The outside, I mean, the outside receiver ran like a little slant, so I just went over the top of it, read it right, and just took it to the house. What does it feel like when you, you know, maybe you just picked it off and you can see the end zone? I mean, What's that run like? I mean, like, I always dream about getting a pick six. Like, it felt like a really, like a really good dream. Like when I got to the end zone, I had to just take it in and just thank God for it. Uh, yeah, we was like in uh, deep Thursday on that, and I read my outside receiver here, right, like a little stop. 
So I read the little tight end, like they had the little number one tight end in the country. So I read him, and he just kept running up the field. So I just ran in the inside shoulder, pitted it off, ran to the sideline, and gave out the gas right there. Tristan Tucker from Orlando, Florida, and also uh, Corey Betty from Troy, Alabama. Coach, always great to hear uh, from the players. And I, I know you get a kick out of listening to them talk after the game is over. But, boy, Tristan Tucker, he, he's a tough spot there. I mean, you got to be tough to play slot back because, obviously, you don't always get the numbers. I mean, it's about blocking, and you got to be a tough guy to play there. And then Corey Beatty, uh, GAC Defensive Player of the Week, we found out just before the show. You know, both those guys are they're awesome Bisons. I mean, they really are. You know, um, you know, Tristan had, had an awesome spring for us. He gave his life to the Lord, was baptized, and you know, it just feels like blessings are, are, are rolling all over that guy. And you know, uh, old Corey Beatty, I, I went down to, to to recruit him, and he he lives way out in the country and got chickens in the yard, and just a wonderful, wonderful family, wonderful mama, and. Just to see him come up here and you know put in all the years to and now to have his chance and be able to come through and then see that huge smile is is such a blessing. You know I love both those young men. Yeah, that smile's infectious, isn't oh, it? I, it's, I, it's, I, I was in the media room when he came in and I shook hands with him just to tell him uh, you know good game and he gave me a big old hug. You yeah, know, Corey Bain. No, he has a, he has a wonderful spirit about him. He yeah. really does. He he stayed this summer in searching for the first time. He actually worked. Uh, at, at a daycare with, with little kids everywhere, and I, you know, I can only imagine what that scene would have been like. A lot of, a lot of smiling going on for sure. And now we get to hear from another bison, as uh, it is Haley Webb who caught up with a sophomore from Bossier City, Louisiana, Tyler McAllister. Thanks, Billy. We're here today inside the brand new indoor facility, and I'm here with junior offensive lineman Tyler McAllister to learn a little bit more about him. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, you told me you're a Saints fan. So is Drew Brees the best quarterback in the league? Absolutely. I think the records that he holds shows that he's a that he's the best and um, honestly if you go by Super Bowls the overall team is what makes the Super Bowl it's not just the quarterback and uh, Drew Brees has Tom Brady beat in all the in all the records so honestly I think so okay so since you're a New Orleans fan I gotta ask do you like Cajun food oh love it love, love it. it do you have a favorite dish uh, jambalaya only my, my dad's though my can, dad can makes the it? best I can't it's a very it's I mean he it takes about three hours. It's crazy, but he makes the best. All so, right. yeah. All right. Well, enough about New Orleans. Uh huh. So, what is your dream vacation spot? Dream vacation spot, probably like Bora Bora or something like that. You know, Always something exotic. Um, but if I'm feeling heat, that's probably where. But honestly, I'd love to go uh, skiing in the Alps. Ooh, I'm a skier, that'd so be uh, that'd be awesome. That'd be a lot of fun. What is your favorite thing to do outside of football? Outside of football, uh, honestly, hanging back at Village with the guys and, uh, you know, playing um, Madden with them or hanging out with them and stuff like that. And, of course, hanging out with uh, my girlfriend and stuff like that. So. Do you pick the Saints on Madden? 100%. Always? Absolutely. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> okay. If you were on America's Got Talent, uh -huh. what would your talent be? Oh, man. I got to say... My talent would probably be, it wouldn't be singing, definitely wouldn't be dancing, um, wouldn't be magic. It'd have to be something, um, man, probably something along the lines of, like, oh, I don't really Can know. Can you do a backflip? No. Not acrobatic. I can't do a backflip. I can't do a front flip. It would probably be along the lines of just like stand up comedy. Stand up comedy? Absolutely. Hey, that's good. That's right. I can win. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, if you were stranded on a desert island uh -huh. and you could have one football coach with you, who would you pick? I would probably. Man, I'd, I'd probably have to go with Coach Simmons. I just feel like he could just kind of, like, if deer was running across, he'd just, like, attack it, kill it, and we'd be good. So. Okay. <laughs> well, on that note, last but not uh -huh. least, give me your best Coach Simmons impersonation. All right, here we go. So, uh, I've been working on this. So, it'd have to be, men, we need warriors out here. We're going to put the best 
people with the best warrior spirit on the field every single Saturday. That <laughs> have to be it. Well, there you have it. That's it for us for Harding Sports Network. I'm Haley Kate Webb with Tyler McAllister, and we're sending it back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks, Haley. I tell you what, she stumped him there on a couple of the questions, and uh, but he did get the, the most important one right because the guy's sitting here watching it, and he's the head bison. He said Paul Simmons would be the bison that he would want to be. Well, uh, I, I love with Tyler. Deer I, yeah, but I don't want to be stuck on an island with, with, <laughs> with, with Tyler. You know, if, if that happens, Tyler, pick somebody else. I want to be on the mainland. I'll come, I'll come get you, big man. Uh, Tyler's an awesome, he's an awesome young man. It took him a long time to figure out that he was a comedian, though, in that answer. <laughs> we are not finished uh, here on Harding Football with Paul Simmons. When we come back, we're going to reflect and talk more about Dr. Gaines after the break, and also look ahead to this week's opponent, Southern Arkansas, on the road after this break. Back on this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons, and we alluded to it at the opening of the show that we lost a giant last week in Dr. Gaines. And Paul Simmons, I, I know that he meant so much to uh, not only the football program, not only to just any sport here at Harding, but uh, just the Harding family. I can't uh, think of any of the big moments that I've gotten to be around at Harding Football that Dr. Gaines or Harding Sports that Dr. Gaines is not a part of. Yeah, I tell you what, I you know I have so many memories of Dr. Gaines, and you know just uh, you know when you win a big ball game, and you know you know what, no matter where you are, or, you know how cold it was or whether it was raining, he's going to be there to embrace you and to want to talk about it. And you know people don't know this, but all the way to the very end, um, a few times a semester, he would come walking into my office, and towards the end he would come shuffling in. And he would sit down in the, the, on the couch, and we would close the door, and we would go through our team position by position. And he wanted to know about every young man. He wanted to know, if, are we getting better here? Are we getting faster there? Uh, he just, he, he loved and cared so deeply for the young men, you know. Uh, he would come to practice, and, and uh, you know, last fall, he, he, uh, he, he found out there was a freshman scrimmage. So he was coming. It was 99 degrees and the sun was beating down, and, but he, he wanted to be there. He sat in the bleachers and we kept trying to bring water to him, but he, he, he wasn't having it. He was just a warrior to the very end. And uh, we, I tell you what, we have a giant, giant hole in our heart uh, because of the loss of him and uh, just what an amazing legacy he, he left for all of us. I mean, it's just, it's, there, there will never be uh, another one like him. You talked about him coming to practice, and, and my oldest son was a part of the football program for a few years as equipment manager, and he would talk about Dr. Gaines bringing his lawn chair, and I've seen him too. And not only just come to practice at the stands, it, he loved to sit on the field with his lawn chair. Well, yeah, that. his him and the lawn chair was, was, you know, it was always there. And, and one of the scariest moments that ever happened to us is he, he wanted to be out there. I mean, he, he, I know he wanted to be in the pads. He wanted to be as close as he could. and. When Coach Huck was still here, we had a situation where we were scrimmaging and Dr. Gaines just kept getting closer and closer and closer. And we ended up tossing the ball to close to where he was standing and he actually got knocked down by our players um, on the field. And, and everything went silent. It was so scary. But of course, he, he bounced up. He was fine. And um, yeah, I just, I mean, I really could talk for hours and hours of, of of memories of him that just are larger than life. Yeah, Dr. Gaines uh, passed away this uh, past week, uh, but obviously uh, he was the biggest Bison fan ever and uh, will always be for sure. And uh, what a tremendous giant again that we lost 
last week. Coach Simmons, Southern Arkansas uh, this week. It's a good Southern Arkansas team. They're obviously 2-0, and and it's not an easy place to play uh, down in Magnolia. And uh, this is a big early season conference game for both teams. No, there's no doubt about it. You know, SAU is, is really, really talented. And, uh, you know, going down there, we actually have played well down there. Uh, but it's a, a long walk to the field and going to be a hot night. But, uh, you know, this really is why you play. Mm -hmm. You play the game for these kind of challenges. You load up, get on the bus, go down there, play versus, you know, what will be a hostile crowd and a talented team. And uh, we, we, we do have our work cut out for us, but we're looking forward to the challenge, I can promise you. All right, Coach Simmons, always great to be with you. Thanks for your time and have a great week. Thank you, Billy. That wraps it up for this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. Don't forget, we'll have the radio broadcast on KVHU 95.3 on the Harding Sports Network, six, uh, 545 pregame, 6 o'clock kickoff from Magnolia on Saturday night. We'll see you next time.